Okay, it looks like we're live. Double checking the YouTubes, the Glavens, and the Gubbins, and the Buttons, and the Pushes. All right, so it uh, looks like we're live. Um, well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing uh, another review here, kind of uh, moving on with our Soul Wars box reviews. And um, these models, these, these Night Haunt models is what we're looking at today. And they're really good. Like, they're really, really, really good. Um, I thought, you know, when they came out, I saw some of the pictures. And I thought, man, these are really nice. But, uh, to, you know, assembling them and putting them together and seeing kind of the detail work that went into them, they're, they're, they're really good. So um, we're just going to take a look at all the models today and uh, just kind of work our way through, I guess. Um, those of you that are joining in, let me know if the volume is all right or the, uh, uh, the levels are okay, music's not too loud, things like that, and we'll be uh, getting on our way here. So um, let's, uh, we're going to start off as we did with the other ones as well. We're going to start off with our the, kind of the smaller infantry, the more massed ones, moving up through the elites, up to the characters, and then finally with our big dude at the end, uh, which, is, uh, which is fantastic. So um, we're going to be looking at the uh, actual cards themselves. Uh, we'll be looking at the rule set for them. And again, it sounds kind of weird, but I kind of went in blind as much as I could on this. Um, I just want to kind of share that enthusiasm as we're kind of learning stuff as we go, and you guys can be a part of that as well too. So, all right, so let's uh, let's get rolling in. Uh, now we're going to start off with our chain rasp horde. Um, these guys kind of perform as the uh, the main uh, bulk of the army, um, and uh, you know they, they give us the numbers that we need to kind of make things happen. So um, we got these guys right here. The cards actually quite uh, quite nice. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, just kind of the iconography at the top. I'm just checking to see if it fits inside the camera here. We're not too, too dark. It looks a little dark, doesn't it? Here, let me adjust one of the lights a bit. There we go. Time to get some new lights eventually here. We'll see how it goes. Um, so we got our chain rasp board here. Um, and, um, you know, the, they've got these guys in kind of a, a monotone type of color. I don't think we're going to go with that. I think we're going to go with something a little uh, more colorful. I think... You know, we have a great opportunity here, and there's lots of paints available, so I think we'll do something a little bit more on the, the colorful side. But uh, for now, um, let's. Uh, this, the cards are nice, they're a good size, and uh, you know they, they've got all the information. Again, like the Stormcast ones, and like the way they're going with all the other cards, they're not just kind of reducing down the uh, War Scroll onto the onto just kind of a PDF reduction type thing. So it actually fits just nicely, just what we're looking for. So. Uh, a horde of chain rasps is a frightening force. A sword or axe might pass right through a chain rasp without finding purchase, but the spiked clubs and rusted blades wielded by these evil beings can mangle flesh and shatter bone. So these guys are essentially the captured souls that have been enlisted into the army uh, of the Night Haunt here. And um, da -da -da -da. Uh, the Dread Warden's the main character. That's the guy with that cool kind of candelabra going on there. Uh, the leader of the unit, add one to the attacks characteristic of the Dreadwalker uh, malignant weapon. In addition, a Chain Rasp Horde has a braver characteristic of 10 instead of 6. So this is a little bit of a break apart. Um, you don't often get a bravery characteristic. It's like the sergeants are the leaders in 40k. So if you can knock out that uh, that warden, um, then they lose their bravery a little bit, which is kind of neat. Um, I also like the fact that you get the extra attack. Now that is significant because these guys have two attacks apiece, which is huge. So you get a range of one, so you have to stack them up pretty hard. Um, but having the two attacks and then the third attack with the uh, with the uh, dread warden is pretty cool, especially since you've got 20 in the box. So that's that's a decent amount of attacks going out the door. Uh, hits and wounds are on fours and fours, so you're cutting down your attrition by half each time, which isn't bad for like a line unit, uh, especially guys played Empire um, and uh, kind of the free people. <laughs> you're doing everything on fives now. Ethereal is a pretty neat mechanic in here. It ignores modifiers, positive and negative, when making save rolls for this unit. And what I like about that is it stabilizes that five plus. So even if you're going up against something that's you know you know really heavily set in armor, or someone's you know stacking a lot of those minus ones or minus two uh, ren modifiers in there, you're going to be okay. And it's actually going to mess around the meta of the game a little bit, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the chilling horde, we reroll uh, wound rolls of one for this unit, while it has ten or more models. Now that's pretty awesome as well. It's um, making it easier and easier to hit, and that only reduces our misses down to like well two thirds essentially. Um, it's a fifty fifty on that, so it's uh, two sixes, two sixths, one third. Um, but you get another crack at the cap there. So if you're rolling hot, you're good. Um, if you're rolling poor, you got a little bit of a makeup, which is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, not too bad. Oh, the other thing that's really sweet is these guys can fly. And I've noticed that as we're kind of going through that pretty much everybody can fly. It's, uh, it's a pretty sweet deal anyway. 
Nice. Okay, so let's look at the models here. So, when we put these together, there was um, a little bit of duplication. Uh, you can see here that I split them off. So, uh, these guys and these guys are all kind of duplicates of each other. Um, and I don't uh, really mind that, actually. You only get one duplicate for every 10 dudes. That's, that's actually pretty decent, all things being equal. And they have one other set of duplicates because they came on the same sprues. And what you're going to see here is that they've got the same back, but the fronts are different on either of them as well. Now, that means I get to keep, or we have an extra front piece with the candelabra and front piece with the, um, with the blocks here. And I think I'm going to use those because I'm going to be converting up, and I'll probably do it live on a stream here, but I'll probably be converting up a black coach, an old black coach, to bring it in line with the new black coach. Um, the 170 Canadian is a little bit pricey for now, and uh, maybe in the future I'll uh, get it done. But I'm going to see what I can do with the models that I have. I've got a couple of neat tricks up my sleeve to see what we can simulate in there. So it should be, uh, should be pretty decent. So what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, take these guys and I'll move them off. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And I'll take these guys as well as I'm dropping dudes all over the place here. And I'll just lift these guys out of the way and then I'll switch over the camera here. Now, for the bulk, uh, kind of for the bulk of the army, um, I'm really you know, liking the way these guys look and they're all unique. They're not all variations of one pose or another. Like There's duplication, but they're all got kind of a little bit of different personality to each of them. And I'd say that's kind of the trend going on with the entirety of the kit is that there is so much going on uh, in terms of a uniqueness to them so um, let's uh, let's kind of work our way through now the leader guy himself the uh, warden now uh, was he the warden yeah he was the uh, yeah he was the dread warden this guy here um, what's nice is he's taller in terms of stature in terms of the model than all the other guys and he'll have this really cool kind of ethereal flame thing going off here uh, and that will kind of flag him as the leader in this whole mess now the theme with these guys, and I mean they, they kind of have an established theme with everybody, but they have this kind of prison theme that echoes through everything. So you'll either see that the, the wardens have the keys here, uh, which is uh, a pretty neat little feature, I think. Uh, and you'll see that, um, you know, he's kind of doing the light thing here as well, and kind of leading the way, and he's drawing in all the other guys. And it seems like these guys can only see these ethereal flame and I think that gets, you know, kind of pulled in all over the place. Wherever there's these big flames, it kind of draws them all in like moths, the, the undead souls. And then they kind of trap them and keep them. Really, really sweet. Um, he's got the sword going on here. And he's got this great kind of floating thing. And I didn't notice it till I came together, but they've got no bodies. They've got arms and, you know, to act and they've got heads. But these guys have no bodies. And it's just this really kind of cool and interesting look and feel to them. I'm loving it. It's really, really neat. Um, the next guy, which of course is the, the duplicate piece, the duplicate backing piece, is the guy here and he's entombed in this prison. He's got this ball and chain uh, kind of dragging him down. And again, with no bodies, he's just floating, carrying this big heavy burden as he as he moves through, uh, you know, kind of real space. But he's just, you know, he's gone. He's dead. His soul is captured. So good. You know, they've got guys with different weapons, which is kind of nice. They've got maces and clubs and, you know, all varieties of guys. But again, just totally imprisoned here. You know, he's got the lock and he's got this, um, you know, he's got this ball and chain just kind of being dragged along the ground, you know, tying his soul down. He doesn't look happy about it either. Really, really cool. He's got his big axe in there. and But just the general animation of this guy is really nice. He's just, he's just kind of angry and kind of lurching forward and trying to fly along um, going in with that same thing we got this guy with you know kind of coming up low risen from the the grave so recently buried the gravestone is smashed and in no respect for the dead and then he's being pulled up and if you can see it in here he's pulling that chain from through the ground as he's rising from this grave and he's already coming out fighting really neat love it Again, similar theme here. He's got his club and he's rising from the grave, chained down by the neck in this one here. And even the blasted tombstone, you know, you can see the ethereal energies pulling up. Again, being kind of held by this block down, you know, these chains linking his, his, his hand to his neck and his other chain being dragged down. 
just floating along just you know and such a huge amount of animation going on with these guys you can tell if, if some, some might slip out i didn't glue them in i'm going to do the bases um uh kind of in a different way here so we'll see um but yeah just this beautiful kind of flowing ethereal energy behind them and what i also like is from a painting opportunity is that we've got some pieces that are kind of cloak that go around the head and other pieces that are just the spirit just being just hovering along the ground but again different weapons but that ball and chain theme dog hair everywhere uh that ball and chain theme is just everywhere in here and this guy's got two you know this kind of block and you know a block and kind of chain coming up in here and just these disheveled looking robes and these spiritual kind of energies flowing along and they're stable too i thought they'd be really wispy and breaky and don't get me wrong some of the like you know some of the thinner pieces here like the candelabra or the uh you know the arms or the um uh the arms or the the kind of the the, the hefts of all the weapons here um they uh you know they're kind of spindly for sure but in general they're a lot more stable than i thought they would be you're gonna have to take a lot of care transporting this army around but uh I thought indefinitely you'll have to take just a little bit more care when you're moving them around. Just super sweet. What else we got in here? Yeah, just more of that kind of continuation of these chains and just fighting the weight of that chain and that block as they're trying to fight their way forward. Yeah. Yeah, so much animation and intensity going on with these models. And they're just beautiful. Like The sculpts are just awesome. You know, he's trying to reach out. He's got his neck pulled down by this block and tackle here. This, you know, he's got his, he's got his, um, his axe, and he's just trying to reach out just against that weight of that chain. Just rising from the grave again. So these guys must be all the new recruits where they really haven't had a whole lot of new kind of room to move you know they've just been pulled out of the ground their souls have been ripped out and now they're now they're just trying to fight fight for Nagash and then this guy here he's just trying to move along but again he's just a full weight of that chain pulled taut really solid yeah and there's so much personality in these guys and it just it, it just totally catches you as you're assembling them just how much you know kind of animation and mobility that they have and you can see here just even from that sideline just that weight that's going on and that drifting forward just trying to you know go and execute as a result of that and man flying with that uh those blocks and tackles and chains and and balls and everything around your neck might be a little uh might be a little tricky so i'm just going to collect these guys up and i mean as a group of basically not throwaway troops, but just kind of that main body of the troop. I think it would have been really easy just to have the same four or five poses, but they really went, uh, they really kind of went to town and set them up that way. Now, if you wanted to split a box with a friend or, or you know, second box with a friend and you wanted to get more stuff or you want to kind of amplify things by a little bit, I mean, all the sprues, they came together and they are all the same, uh, they're all the same thing, which is pretty neat. Okay, moving on to the kind of next most numerous are these uh, glaive wraiths and the glaive wraiths themselves uh, the glaive wraith stalkers they're kind of built upon uh, skaven now I've got my let's see if I can grab one here I got a kind of a work in process it's not a very good one I'll find a different one here uh, of the uh, lost company actually these guys here and there's these stocky kind of uh, skaven let's switch over here and they've got this, you know, this kind of humped, kind of rat skeleton thing going on here. And I find that the glaive wraiths have that same kind of posturing. And so I'm guessing that they're the souls of the Skaven, which is kind of cool that they would even come over from kind of that chaos side. And nobody can escape, you know, Nagash's, you know, ultimate kind of justice. Except for the Stormcast. And I think that's why they got Nagash so riled. Is that, you know, he's not getting all the souls that he needs or, or feels he deserves. Okay, um, let's take a look at the card. So the Grave Wraith Stalkers here, um, you know, again, they, uh, they was, comes with five in the box, which is kind of nice. And um, when I flip it over here... Uh, the Glaive Wraith Stalker is an unstoppable force. 
Its long blade always points at the beating heart of its intended victim. Though it drifts slowly towards its quarry, it is inevitable that the hunter's glaive will one day pierce the chest of its prey. Very neat. Um, you know, they got the six inch move, which is standard for these guys. They got the save and they can fly, which is also pretty sweet. Now the hunter's glaive is nice in the sense that it's got a two inch range, so we can stack the, these guys in behind the smaller chumpy troops, and they've still got two attacks each, which is pretty impressive. Um, they hit on fours and they wound on threes, so they're a little bit more uh, damaging in the elite side of thing, and they do one damage. Um, a death beat drummer. Models in this unit can be a death beat drummers. A unit that includes any death beat drummers can retreat and charge in the same turn. So these guys can bounce around. Now you don't get any of those drummers in the kit, uh, but I'm sure there's an expansion out there somewhere on its way. Um, they can fly. Again, that kind of floating, flying, uh, ethereal thing is pretty darn awesome. Uh, the point of death. Uh, Reroll failed hit rolls for attack when this unit's hunter's glaives um, sorry, with this unit's Hunter's Glaives, if this unit or the target unit charged in the same turn. Oh, wow. So these are like the ultimate counter charge unit. Um, or if they have, um, if, you know, they get charged themselves. So that might be a cool thing to kind of lure them in. Um, if you keep them within three inches, obviously, they can pile in. And if that other unit charged, it might be a little bit of a gotcha, which is kind of cool. That's ethereal. So they, again, they also ignore modifiers when making saves for the unit. Pretty sweet. Now, they don't have that conditional bravery that the other guys have. These guys just have a straight-up bravery of 10, a little more on the elite side. Um, but I'm not scared of nothing, these guys. All right. So I'll put that over there, and let's uh, bring in the models here. So again, they're very skaven in nature, which I think is cool. These kind of sneaky... Uh, sneaky guys kind of rolling through and you know you can picture these guys hunting all the way uh, you know across the plains where they kind of see a target and they just drift slowly and I picture very much like the um, the the Wraith Kings off Lord of the Rings for sure now they're all kind of hunchy now just by the nature of the thing they've got a very similar pose and I think there's some duplication no not too much in the way of duplication they've all got a different you know, kind of look and feel aesthetic to their robes. So, no, I don't think there's any duplication going on with these guys. And again, that ethereal energy, and still fairly stable. The fact that they're on the larger uh, base probably helps that out a little bit as well. But they've got these kind of rusty blades, and I think that's the theme. We're going to be using a lot of rust um, on these. And uh, I'm going to be doing a series of videos probably on just kind of the different rust effects that are out there. Uh, the model mates one is very tricky to get to, but um, uh, but the the G dub version is actually pretty decent as well. So we'll be we'll be rusting up all the blades of these guys and just uh, making it look very unhealthy, which will be great. Uh, they got the spines at the back coming through their robes, and they've got these kind of draped draped robes over top, and then again that blend with that ethereal energy, really neat. You know, different kind of takes on the theme, some with mouths open, some with mouths closed. But I like this distinctive hump here. Even if they don't have the flesh, their spirit is kind of humped up and over to give them that kind of stalkery, uh, stalkery kind of look. And the blades are all just kind of chipped and worn and old. And even the wood is all gnarled and beat up. Ah, very cool. A little bit more distinction here on this guy's robes uh, versus kind of that ethereal mess. But again, they're tying in that chained kind of theme in here as well. Yeah, just big gouges out of there. Out of there. Uh, the little halberdy here. The, the malignant weapons. Oh, sorry, the uh, hunter's glaive. That's these guys here. Very nice. Up here we got this guy again, uh, again, very nice definition between the robe and kind of that ethereal energy. But, you know, very similar to these guys in the same theme. This guy's here with his uh, mouth closed and floating along. Now, there's something that I wanted to talk about um, with this. Now, when I originally put this guy together, I thought, oh, no, he's busted because his, uh, his little graveyard gate or graveyard fence here is all kind of bent over. And then I look through the models, and they're all the same. They're all kind of set up that way. And what's interesting is, is they've got this kind of energy about them, this weight, you know, this, this heaviness to them. And they'll actually go through and bend these bars as they, as they move across the landscape. So I imagine these guys would rustle trees and, you know, kind of bend with their force. Uh, just this, this kind of, um, oh, like, um, 
this kind of psych psychic energy, this this deathly force um, as it's kind of coming through, uh, and just that kind of weight pressing down on all these bars. It's just it's just a neat thing that they've just very subtly put into the into the model's bases, but it's 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 there throughout, and we'll see it. So, yeah, nice models. I mean, even for these guys, and they're kind of you know again they're starter box models, so I mean they could just throw these in and, and kind of hope for the best. But they've gone out of their way to, you know, these are what the Skaven spirits do. You know, they kind of hunt a little bit differently. So again, you get five, which is a really good number in here. Um, and again, if you had a couple friends who bought the starter, you could buy a, uh, buy a new box, so like a, one of the, the kind of single boxes of the uh, Glaive Wraith Stalkers and split up the drums or something or convert something on your own. I don't know, but, um, but really, really neat seeing these guys. And they've got this kind of... Kind of hunched down kind of you know sneaky tactical you know weaving through the forest hunting their prey kind of look to them very impressive i like it all right next up it's over here now the models are on the fragile side so we do want to make sure um we definitely treat them with a lot of respect that's going to be kind of the big thing going forward all right Next up, we're going to look at our uh, Grimgast Reapers. And these guys are all right. Now, if I uh, was Nagash, and I wanted to do some real damage out there to even some of the more close combat -y armies, I would send in a bunch of guys with super scythes, right? Like just where, you know, just indiscriminate, absolutely, uh, evil uh going in there and destroying you know just the hordes of guys uh, i'd send these guys and look at these scythes they're incredible and again i think we will go with a little bit brighter of a, a setup here for sure on our guys all right grim gas reapers uh arch plotters and schemers in life grim gas reapers are cursed in their undeath uh, to kill indiscriminately those foolish enough to stand before a grim gas reaper usually end their lives hacked apart into bleeding chunks of meat Awesome, gory and crazy. Um, they've got a slasher scythe. It's got a two inch range. It's got two attacks, fours and threes again. So a little bit more uh, elite than the hunters, um, or sorry, the same kind of eliteness in terms of um, you know uh, hitting and wounding. But these guys have a minus one rend on them with one damage, which is kind of neat. Uh, the death knell, the big super bell, uh, has got a two inch range. It's only got one attack, threes and threes, however, because you know it's a giant bell. Um, and then you have a rend of minus one and two damage because you're getting hit with a giant ethereal bell. Sweeter than candy. All right. Extoller of Shish. Um, the leader of this unit is an extoller. The extoller is armed with a death knell instead of a slasher scythe. So the leader has got the bell. That's kind of cool. It's not just a banner person. So uh, usually that's relegated off. So again, it's this idea of kind of drawing people in and follow me and all that. Uh, they can also fly, which is crazy because these guys move eight inches. Um, so they can really just get tucked in there very, very quickly. For whom the bell tolls, the death knell steals the life force of those that it batters to death and redirects it to harm any enemy creatures that are nearby. Allocate wounds inflicted by this unit's death knell after allocating inflicted uh, wounds inflicted by this unit's slasher sides. For each enemy model that is slain by wounds inflicted by a death knell, you can inflict one mortal wound on an enemy unit within three inches of the model carrying the death knell. That's awesome. So not only do you get extra wounds for each enemy model that is slain, you can bounce it to something else. So imagine that having a character hanging out by a bunch of infantry and going in wrecking the infantry because they're easier to kill, um, wrecking a whole pile of those and then inflicting, inflicting that damage on a character. Uh, uh, for each enemy model that is slain by wounds inflicted by death knell, you can inflict one mortal wound on an enemy unit within three inches of the model carrying the death knell. So you can actually not snipe, well I guess you could snipe, but you could apply that extra damage as you're sucking up the souls in the bell and then flinging them at, the, uh, at their leader, killing them with their own souls. That is sweet. That's awesome. Um, they're ethereal, so again, they don't get the positive negatives. And these guys have a save of 4+, plus, which is, uh, again, the Glaive Wraiths have the save of 4+. Plus. Uh, the little guys have a save of 5+. Plus. But again, keeping that 4+, plus, a solid 50-50, that ain't bad. That's pretty decent. 
and then reaped like corn. If the target unit has five or more models, you can reroll failed hit rolls for this unit's sla slasher size. So uh, rerolling failed hit rolls. Well, the hit is where we have the problem in the first place. So that gives us a massive benefit in there if they got over five models. So yeah, that idea of just blapping into a big pile of guys, um, ripping them apart with the sides, and then soaking up that damage, and then uh, uh, for each enemy model that is slain uh, by wounds inflicted by the death knell. So you'd have to put the death knell in after. Um, so, oh, okay, so that's the balance. So you, get, you do the sides first, you do big piles of damage, uh, and then you hit them with the death knell. So you're not going to be able to get too many, but you've got uh, one attack with the death knell and two damage, so you get two guys out of go, I guess. Um, so not as amazing as uh, you know, kind of the abusers would want, but uh, but not bad nonetheless. If it's got five or more models, we can start hammering down extra extra hits. Very cool, or rerolling the hits, I guess. Uh, and it's not even rerolling ones; it's failed hit rolls. So that's that's pretty decent, actually. Takes you to Space Marine stature there. Awesome. Okay, let's take a look at the models. So um, we've got the extoller here. Switch over. Uh, we've got the extoller, and then we've got uh, three slashers that go with them. Now, again, what's nice about this, and it's it's shouldn't be that big of a surprise, is that if we've got the um, the smaller model counts, and again, we can go with a little bit more uniqueness on these on these models here. Now, these guys fly, and of course, that's all echoed in what they're doing. <laughs> but just this, like if there's if there's a bunch of like little, you know, uh, kind of Gretchen or um, if there's a goblins or if there's a bunch of like free people or something like that, these guys are just swinging full nuts. Hey, just go go it all over the. It's it's, it's great. Just the the animation is huge. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, the extoller first. And uh, again, just tying into this kind of beat up stone architecture coming right out of the tombstone itself. Uh, using that energy and picking it up, and you, you kind of picture these streams of energy traveling across the, you know, kind of the forest floor, the uh, the graveyard floor, and then coalescing up in here. Now these guys are not tied down. Uh, I've seen that's another notice to do. So obviously they've been around for a little bit, and instead of their chains holding kind of balls to kind of keep them down or blocks, they've got these bells. So these guys are ringing these death knells as they go through the forest and. Ah, just nice and just this haunting, deliberate, not trapped, but they're just flying and being super aggressive moving forward. Yeah, nice. And this we all kind of beat up bronze we can do with this, you know, kind of this this mutilated, you know, just thoroughly used wood, ancient, ancient, you know, kind of wood getting, you know, uh, you know, holding this bell together. Very cool. Just so much animation. Uh, looking at this guy again, just that full tilt forward, leaning forward and swooping around, circling the enemy. He's got this kind of circling, kind of vulture kind of look and feel to him, which is neat. Holding his scythe down low as he's hacking and slashing. And again, coming up from the, the graveyard, the tombs, the tombstones here. Very cool. And uh, they've got a bit of a mesh going on in here. Just a very subtle kind of mechanic. And you can see it in the, in the extoller as well. But just this little bit of like meshed armor, just to give them a little bit more, um, give them a little bit more strength. And visually, it'll break up the model a little bit too. We can do we can do like a rusty kind of mesh would be, be really sweet. Again, you get the mesh kind of creeping through on this guy. It's ethereal energy. And these two guys, the last two, are just the just the fact that they're just hauling up and just scything through the enemy. Very neat. But yeah, definitely good for taking on the horde. That's what they're. That's what we're essentially built for, and that's actually good. I've been playing a lot of the horde stuff between the um, um, between the death guys, just having hordes of zombies and skeletons, and having. Uh, I want to do like a little goblin force, which is uh, I'll make it'll make it to the channel here, uh, and I'm really enjoying just you know even having a ton of free people kicking around. All my Nurgle guys are based on that kind of horde mentality, so you need guys that will be more effective going against hordes, and I think these guys definitely fit that bill. The fact that they fly and move eight inches means they can really cover some territory across the board. Very nice. And then our last friend here, just that hauling up, you know, top turnbuckle off of wrestling, just, you know, coming up and over top again with that mesh in there. And a nice, clearly defined, 
bit of a cloak. And even the cloaks on these guys, they've got this kind of leathery lined, you know, or just this little bit of kind of a decorative feature in here. And I don't know if I would paint that as leather or just make it as folded over fabric or something like that. Very neat to see them in here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, great models. Like, I mean, there's so much going on with these guys. This is the starter box for crying out loud. Very nice. All right, so that's the Grimgast Reapers. And now we're going to move on to our characters, really. Let's get these guys out of the way. Switch up our camera. Now, the first character we're going to go with is our Spirit Torment. Okay. And what I like about these guys is that these guys were the jailers uh, way back in the way back in the day when they were alive and they were probably cruel and vicious punishers and jailers. And what I think is really cool is they've got these locks, these big locks and these keys here. And I can really see these guys, um, you know, going through and they're the ones who are in charge of capturing the souls. Um, the master creatures known as the sp as spirit torments were pitiless jailers in life. In death, they seek out those that Nagash deems his right, uh, by, uh, deems his by right of rulership, bludgeoning them with their ensorcelled iron padlocks, and before locking them away or locking away their souls. Very neat, very cool. And he's a six-inch mover guy, uh, high bravery or whatever. But he's got loads of different uh, kind of rules that are associating with him. Uh, uh, Shacklegeist chains, uh, two-inch range, three attacks. So he definitely puts out the, a big pile of attacks. He's got um, fours and threes to, uh, to hit and to wound, a rend of minus two, and a damage of D3. So this guy is subtle because he's small and he's a single model, but he can just rip out tons of damage. Three attacks at D3 each? Holy cow, that's, that's massive, right? Um, Spirit Torment, a single model, da, da 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 they can fly, awesome. So six inches, not so great, but man, they can fly, which is great. Captured Soul Energy, the chains and padlocks carried by the Spirit Torments are potent magical uh, artifacts that can capture the departing spirit of the slain foe and use it to invigorate nearby night haunt warriors. So as you're like killing people, you can soak them up and then use that to kind of get everyone else all excited. That's pretty sweet. At the start of the battle shock phase, if three or more enemy models were slain that turn, uh, not by this guy, uh, pick a friendly night haunt unit within six inches of this model and heal D3 wounds that have been allocated to it. If three or more enemy stormcast eternals were slain that turn, heal three wounds instead of D3 wounds. <laughs> because he's capturing the stormcast souls instead of them trying to get away so you're actually going through and killing sigmar's finest that's pretty sweet alternatively instead of healing the unit you picked if models from that unit have been slain you can return them to the unit roll a d3 you can return any slain models to that unit that have combined wounds characteristic of less than or equal to the number you rolled you can bring models back up to three wounds very nice if your army includes more than one spirit torment, at least three enemy models must have been slain during the turn for each spirit torment that uses this ability. So you can't, you know, have one thing and have all these guys amping them up. That's a nice balancing thing in there. Easy to explore. Explore? Exploit. Uh, torment may uh, may only use the ability more than once. May only may use the ability more than once in the same turn in the same battle shock phase. So if you're going through and you're rolling a bunch of guys, you can do massive amounts of healing. And keep in mind, you're probably killing, if it's going to be three enemy models, you're going to be going for probably the fluffy guys. With your big uh, Reaper dudes, you can collect these very, very quickly. And then you can heal them up with this guy in behind them. Very neat mechanic going on, a bit of this back and forth. Uh, Ethereal, they ignore the modifiers. Again, with that 4 plus save, that's pretty solid. And the gash is bidding. Spirit Torments ensure... That Nagash's uh, unrepentant hosts redouble their efforts to carry out his bidding. Reroll hit rolls of one for friendly night haunt units while they are wholly within 12 inches of any friendly spirit torments. I'm thinking we might need a couple of these guys, two or three, just because of that 12 inch bubble. And rerolling the ones, pretty solid. So you got reroll hit rolls of one, and then the other ones you got reroll fails, but this will really amp things up a little bit. 
what a neat idea. So he's, they've actually consolidated a couple different ideas into one. Um, I like the fact that you can boost it, the rerolls of one, which is cool. Um, and again, the fact that they've got this kind of Stormcast Eternals thing, that's that's pretty darn cool. I'm really digging that. Good for the narrative stuff too. I think we'll be playing a little bit with these guys for sure. Uh, captured Soul Energy. Yeah, just the ability to kind of heal and do stuff. But they have to be doing damage. It's just not an... Um, an absolute heal. You can't just hang back and keep healing, you know, like a ranged guy or something like that. Very nice. All right, let's take a look at the model. Mr. Spirit Torment, or Miss, I should not, uh, I should not assume. And these were the jailers of the days of old. And you can see that the theme now is these locks all over the place, and they've got them all kind of stored and locked together. He's got this little bit of an armored kind of heavier carapace at the top this leathery kind of carapace up here and just the you know the keys coming from the you know trailing off of the jailer as he moves with these massive padlocks uh, you know that you can see as he's carrying them along and again this around his neck all these different locks and bits and pieces he's just going through just grabbing people's souls and entombing them no face on this guy either which is kind of neat um, just this kind of masked um, not executioner, but this masked kind of jailer face with his like leathery mask over the top and his jaw kind of bending down and below. Really cool. Yeah, these guys are awesome. I love them. I mean, it's just, it's just really cool. And just the theme of this, the, these jailed souls. And of course, going along with all the other guys, the chain rasp horde guys, uh, having all the locks and everything kind of dangling off. Very sweet. Yeah, what a neat model gonna be awesome to paint up absolutely awesome all right i'll get my friend over here we'll switch out the camera and i think the next one we'll do will be the guardian of souls now i like this model in the sense that uh we've got a couple of things going on here in terms of the colors that they chose we've got that flame that they're all drawn to you know kind of the way it's shot back here we've got those ethereal energies blending into his cloak very nice. Very, very cool. Now let's check out his rules here. All right, the Guardian of Souls. So um, he's got to move six, save a four plus, five wounds, which is really good. Um, the one thing I didn't mention was that all the other models um, that were in the Grimgast Reapers, the Stalkers, the Horde, uh, they've all got one wound apiece. So I would expect in other armies to have the Grave Wraith Stalkers or the Grimgast Reapers, these elite guys, to have more wounds. And in reality, they don't. So you're going to have to really rely on keeping them alive. Um, the Spirit Torment also has uh, five wounds in there. Um, so very similar. These support structures kind of move up together. Uh, but um, it was interesting to see that even the medium elite guys, they don't really have a lot of wounds. So you got to really rely on that bringing back mechanic, which is neat. Um, the Guardian of Souls. A Guardian of Souls keeps vigil over the dead whilst driving those around them to the heights of malice. With one of these, uh, when one of these sorcerer specters goes to war, hundreds of the living dead are drawn to their lantern's flame from leagues around. So I kind of picture this as not being really visible, very kind of dim. But as far as what they see, it's this gleaming beacon of pure energy kind of drawing everybody in. And I think we'll do that, try and reflect that in our painting as well, keeping it bright and interesting to look at. Guardian of Souls is a single model. Da, 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 it can fly. Um, it's ethereal, so it gets that uh, positive negative save. So that's kind of the main shtick for the army uh, where they can't be modified. Uh, very much like a demon army, I guess, in that sense. Uh, the Nightmare Lantern, the Cursed Light of uh, Nagizer. Nagishir, Nagash Izar, Nagash Izar, uh, bound with, uh, within a nightmare lantern, invigorates the dark souls of any night haunts that it illuminates. Add one to wound rolls for melee weapons uh, wielded by friendly night haunt models that are within nine inches of this model. So it's not a unit, so you can't do that kind of daisy chain where you got these guys orbiting around, but within nine inches of this model. So again, that's a pretty good bubble. That's an 18 inch wide bubble. Um, and if you mix that with the healing of the spirit torment, you can really get some cool combinations going on in there. A Guardian of Souls is a wizard. Nice. You can attempt to cast one spell in your hero phase and attempt to unbind one spell. It knows the Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, and Spectral Lure spells. Uh, the Spectral Lure, channeling the Holy Light. 
of the unholy light of his nightmare lantern, the guardian summons forth the spirits of the dead. The spectral lure has a casting value of 6. If successfully cast, pick a friendly summonable night haunt unit wholly within 18 inches of the caster. You can either heal d6 wounds that have been allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are currently allocated to the unit, you may return a number of slain models to it that have a combined wounds characteristic equal to or less than the roll of the d6. So it's summonable units only. Um, so not the spirit torment, none of the characters, but any of the any of the other guys, the uh, the Chain Rast, the Glaive Wraith, uh, Stalkers, and the Grim Ghast Reapers, those guys are all summonable, which is pretty cool. Uh, you'll notice that the characters are not summonable. So that's an important distinction to make there, for sure. <clears throat> so um, we can bring the wounds in uh, at D6. So they've all got a wound apiece, so you can really start bringing the guys back in a big way with this Spectral Lure. So he's a wizard. He's there to kind of summon guys back in, which is nice. Um, you can definitely add to the existing units if you've got a big block of guys and just kind of keep them going, which is which is pretty sweet. And because you've got hordes of the smaller guys, this adding one to the wound roll is really going to multiply a lot better. So you'd have him trailing your your blob of uh, your blob of the um, chain rasp horde there. Very cool. And he's a straight up guy. Like I mean, if you're just kind of new to the game, he's a straight up wizard, which is which is actually really nice to see. All right, let's take a look at the model himself now. So our guardian of souls again kind of lives up to that fluff. Um, there is that bent fence mechanic that we can see right off the bat, and it really draws your eye in. Just this force of these these rods, just bending away as he's kind of working his way and exerting his force across the land. Very neat. It makes them though, even though they're light and they can fly, it gives them um it gives them kind of a, a weight in the real world, which is kind of kind of nice. He's got that kind of carapist backdrop there as well, or that back piece of off the back, the little bits of armor there. And of course that lantern is pretty solid as well. And it's not just like a bright lantern, it's just got this this energy just kind of pouring out of it and falling to the ground as he travels. Creepy as all hell, man. Nuts. Uh, this looks like it was made out of, a, you know, again, one of these kind of wrought iron posts. Um, and we'll paint it up just like that as well. With these lanterns just spewing out all the goodness in there. I also think the face is a nice touch as well. He's got this kind of crisscross, kind of bronze metallic... Uh, face and again it kind of carries in with this kind of wrought iron type of theme i'm not sure if i'll do it as a wrought iron i might do it like as a bronze to give him a little bit more of a standout but really good and you'll notice that his sword is less crappy than the others because you know he's one of the characters in there and he's drawing everybody in 